everybody and welcome to my November beauty favourites. Before I start the big massive ramble about all the things that I've been loving this month, I wanted to talk to you about something very exciting that is happening in December. So a lot of you guys have been asking about meetups recently and specifically ones based in London because I think that's where quite a lot of you are and it's also someone that's quite easy to get to. So Susie and I will actually be hosting a meetup with Kiehl's which I'm super excited about because they're one of my favourite skincare brands. It's going to be on the 9th of December at their Regent Street store and you can come along have a little chat with me, talk about skincare, talk about our favourite things, talk about anything you want to really. There's going to be drinks and Christmassy food and goodie bags, it's just going to be a really lovely fun night and I'm really excited to get the chance to meet some of you. We're going to be doing a Q&A as well, so if you have any burning questions that you've always wanted to ask us, we're going to be answering those for you and I'm just genuinely excited to meet all you guys and have a good chat with you. So I will leave all the relevant information down below because I'm sure I will probably forget to say something very important in this video. There are only going to be a hundred tickets tickets for the night though so if you want to be in with a chance of winning one all you have to do is retweet one of my tweets which I will link down below so all you have to do is retweet that and I know a few of you guys don't have Twitter and you might be a little bit upset that you can't enter through the YouTube comments but unfortunately YouTube doesn't allow us to do that anymore so maybe if you really have a burning desire to enter just set up a Twitter account you don't have to put any particular personal information on there at all you can just literally set it up retweet this tweet and then delete it in a few weeks time if you really want to so yes, that is my very exciting announcement, which I'm really, really looking forward to. It's only a couple of weeks to go now, so I hope I'll be meeting quite a few of you guys there. So on to my beauty favourites now, that is the reason we're all here. And because I have been moving and most of my life is in boxes right now or stuffed into some kind of plastic bag, I don't really have a lot of beauty products to talk about because I don't actually have many things around me. I also haven't been using a great deal of things because I've been splitting my time between the house and the flat at the moment and just packing and not doing much else. I've kind of been living out of a makeup bag and most days I haven't been really wearing makeup at all. First of all, I need to start off with something that got left out of last month's favourites. A few of you noticed that this is in the thumbnail and not in the video and got a bit confused about that. I have to say that was completely my fault. I definitely edited it out and forgot that it was even supposed to be in there. So I'm going to talk about it now and it's a perfume from Tom Ford. So this is Tom Ford Noir and I gave it a very enthusiastic, very rambly and long-winded review in last month's favourites. Unfortunately, you won't be seeing that. But I'm still just as excited about this fragrance this month as I was last month. This just sums up winter fragrance to me. It's just so warming and so deep and musky. It's a very dark, very kind of lingering, heady fragrance. I love those types of scents. I think they're always my favourites just because they're so different to anything else. They're very unique and they smell very distinct when you're wearing them. I always like wearing perfumes that are a little bit more unique like that and that you can't necessarily find everywhere. So this is just perfect for that. I love the packaging too. I think this bottle is absolutely stunning as is all the Tom Ford packaging. So this has just been the fragrance of the moment for me. I'm totally, totally in love with it. Really can't stop spraying it onto myself. So I'm glad I have finally talked to you about it. Fingers crossed this part won't then get edited out again because that could happen, you never know, but I am really, really loving this. So on the complete opposite end of the spectrum scent-wise, I've also been really into a fragrance body cream. And I talked about this a little bit in my last video, which was my high-end favourites. This is the Erin Evening Rose Body Cream, and it's very different from the Tom Ford perfume scent-wise. It's a very fruity, not particularly light, but very kind of floral and uplifting fragrance. The formula of the body cream is great, but it's just the fragrance that I absolutely love about this. It just smells so delicious, it's literally good enough to eat. And I've been kind of using this mainly as a treat, especially in the evenings if I take a nice bath. I like to put this on afterwards and it just leaves me smelling really kind of fruity and really rosy and I think it's quite a nice one to go to sleep in. It's quite relaxing in a way, so once you've got it all over you and you can smell it, it kind of just really chills you out. I usually hate the scent of rose but this is just so rich and warming and just nothing like I've ever smelled rose to smell like before, so I really really love this. Skincare wise, I've been trying a few bits from Origins and this is from their Dr. Wild for Origins Mega Mushroom range. I remember being into this many, many moons ago, many years ago. I think I had the eye cream and the serum and I really liked it, but I think they've brought out some newer bits since then. So I have the micellar water here and I have the facial cleanser. This one I think is beautiful. It's very, very moisturizing. It's kind of like a lotion-y balm texture. So you just massage it all over your skin and then I like to rinse this off and it just leaves my face feeling so really 
dehydrated and it's also quite soothing. I think this whole range is designed to be very soothing if you have kind of more irritated skin and skin that gets sort of red easily. And that definitely fits the bill for me at the moment. My skin has just panicked recently. I think it's probably something to do with moving and kind of living in a different house and just being generally quite stressed for most of the month. And it's just been red and a bit blotchy. I've had patches of dryness and all sorts of blemishes and things. And this has really been the only thing that as soon as I put it on, it just soothes my skin and it just feels like it's better. So I've really been relying on these two this month. I really, really like them. I wouldn't say the micellar water is brilliant at taking off makeup. It does the bulk of my kind of foundation and concealer and everything pretty well, but in terms of eye makeup, it just doesn't really remove it. So I like to use these two in the mornings just as a kind of cleansing duo, and I really, really love them. And I'm kind of looking into a few more bits from the range now because I think it's just such a nice one. I think they do a really rich, really hydrating day cream, so that could be perfect for my skin at the moment because it's just so dry, so dehydrated. So let's move on to makeup favorites. I only have three bits here, and they're all quite relatively new launches, but they're ones that I've been really enjoying using a lot this month. So the first one is the Gwen Stefani for Urban Decay palette. It and I wasn't particularly interested in this. It didn't really wow me when I saw the press releases about it, but Urban Decay actually sent one to me to try. And actually, having used it now and seen all the colours in person and up close, I do really like it. And of course, it's Urban Decay, so it has some really amazing formulas. It basically is a neutral palette with a few kind of slightly more eccentric shades at the top. So these, one, two, three, four, five, these ten shadows here, they're actually really, really gorgeous. Quite a few of them are matte, so they make for really nice crease colours. They have have some really nice shimmers in there too and then these two dark ones are just beautiful for kind of doing liner looks or making the eyes a bit smokier. It also has a black in here, I really love it when eyeshadow palettes do that because I think it's a really great option if you don't have a liquid liner with you, you can just use that instead. And then these four colours at the top I haven't got much use out of. Saying that I actually really like this one here which is pop, it's kind of a more peachy shimmery colour. And then the blue here as well I love, I'm quite into blue eyeshadow, I don't think it suits me but I like the idea of it so I've been using this a few times, kind of just smoked into my lashes as more of a liner look and I really like it that way I think it's really nice probably the only color that I won't use as much out of it is this one here which is called Harajuku which is a very bright pink I might use it as a blush you never know but I think altogether the shadows and the colors in here are just really really great I also really like the packaging some of Urban Decay's palettes don't close that well and they're not the best kind of quality material but this one I think is really nice it kind of fits into my bag and I've been able to carry this around with me all month without any problems. And then also another launch that I've been trying is from Marc Jacobs. This is the, I'm going to have to read this because I can never remember the name, the Invisible Undercover Perfecting Coconut Face Primer. And this one I was actually really excited to try as soon as I saw it. I thought it was a really interesting concept for a primer. It actually smells a bit like coconuts too which I'm really not complaining about, it smells pretty good. And this primer is just a really nice balance between hydrating and priming. I kind of find you have to pick between the two. When you go for a really long lasting primer, it tends to be very dehydrating and they usually make my skin feel quite dry. And then if you go for a hydrating one, your makeup's just gonna slip off your face really, really quickly. So this one I think finds the perfect balance right in the middle. It's definitely very hydrating, very soothing, so it's quite a nice one to use in the morning. It just makes my skin feel very comfortable and a little bit refreshed after I've woken up but it then kind of sets down and it kind of dries into my skin a little bit and then I go on with my foundation and it just seems to keep everything in place that little bit longer. It also kind of blurs my skin a little bit. It makes some of my pores look smaller which is always a good thing and it just makes my foundation look smoother once it's on. It makes it look very seamless and very flawless. So I've been really into this primer. I am kind of skeptical about primers most of the time. I don't really see that they make much of a difference just because they're covered up with so many different products but actually I think I'm now converting by this one. I've been using it every single day this month and I really really like it. And then my last makeup favourite is probably one that I've had the most questions about this month because I really have been wearing it non-stop and it's a lipstick from Erin. Again I'm just really into Erin this month and it's the Rose Balm lipstick in, let me remember, number 04 Coral Sand. I had this on in my last favourites video and so many of you wanted to know what it was and I actually just put it on I think the first time that day just to film that video and then I realised how beautiful it was and it fast became my go-to everyday lipstick colour. It's just a very pretty, very brightening, very nice, easy to wear coral colour. And when it comes to everyday colours, I tend to need a little bit more of a brightening shade, something that's a bit pinkier, because otherwise my skin looks a bit dull and dead, and that is just down to me being very, very pale most of the time. But this just really lifts my face, it picks everything up, and the formula of this is so beautiful. It just feels like a lip balm, it just feels like I'm wearing a really rich, really hydrating lip balm, but it has so much pigment and colour to 
to it as well and I think it's quite rare to find a moisturising lipstick that isn't just shiny and glossy and slides everywhere. So I'm super impressed with this and this has just been living in my handbag, you can probably tell because it's a little bit scratched now, um, but I've been so into this, I've been wearing it pretty much every single day and it's also one of those shades that you can just throw on without even really looking, so a great one to just carry it around with you all the time and I'm totally in love with it. So that is a little roundup of my favourites this month. Next month will be December, it will be the last monthly favourites of the year, I can't quite believe that. I hope you are all looking forward to December and I know a lot of you guys are asking me if I'm going to be doing Vlogmas and the answer of course is yes, I love Vlogmas, I think it's quite a lot of hard work, it takes a lot to edit videos and upload them pretty much daily, but I really want to do it, I think it's a really fun thing. So you will be seeing Vlogmas from me this month, which is very, very exciting, and I hope you're all excited about that too, and it's not just me getting excited here on my own. And like I said in the beginning of the video, if you do want to come along to London to meet me and Susie at the Kiehl's meetup that we're hosting, I will leave all the details below for you and the tweet that you need to retweet to enter for the chance to win a ticket. So I think that's everything I needed to say, I've probably forgotten something but I hope you enjoyed watching this video give it a like if you did and subscribe if you're new and I will see you all soon bye